Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. So I'm talking about terrestrial vegetation and how it was growing in the 80s and 90s. And in 1988, there seemed to be a turning point and the earth is no longer being greening since 1998. So, you know, of course we know about desertification and forests being cut down and wildfires and things, for example, the ongoing fires in the Brazilian rainforest. Um, there's lots of other factors, but there's a factor called um, vapor pressure deficit. And I'm going to talk about that and compare the effects of that factor, um, which is actually decreasing uh, plant, plant growth. Um, and also put it in context with uh, CO2 fertilization effect and uh, changing temperature and rainfall in the and soil water. Okay, so this is the uh, peer-reviewed paper which has just um, come out recently which I want to discuss. I started talking about it in the previous video. So the vapor pressure deficit, VPD. Okay, so when the air temperature rises you get um, the saturated water vapor pressure increases at the rate of 7% per degree Celsius or, or Kelvin, according to the clapeus clapeyron relationship. So basically warmer air can hold more water vapor. Most of the water vapor from the warming is put in the air from evaporation of water in the oceans. There's also evaporation of water from soils and there's evapotranspiration, which is from plants. Now the actual water vapor pressure for a given temperature um, is an important factor. If this was rising uh, by the same amount as the saturation, then the, the air would, would have basically the same um, relative humidity. Okay, but it turns out that, you know, if there's less evaporation, and you, and you can't keep up to that 7% uh, increase of, wa of the saturation uh, per, per, temp per Celsius or per Kelvin, then the air will basically get drier. And so that's this vapor pressure deficit would be increasing basically. The gap between the moisture vapor actually in the air and the maximum that can be in the air increases. So different studies are showing um, that um, that the um, although the long-term trend of globally average land surface relative humidity remains insignificant, so it doesn't change much, a sharp decrease has been observed. This is over long-term trends, but in shorter-term trends, there's been a sharp decrease since 2000, and that means a sharp increase in the land surface vapor pressure deficit. Um, and this is having a negative impact on plant growth. Okay, uh, what is the reason for the decrease in plant growth? Well, the leaf and the canopy photosynthetic rates decline when the atmospheric BPD increases, and this is believed to be due to stomatal closure. So the stomata, or the opening in the leaf, reduces in uh, cross-section area so that the plant can preserve its water but then this reduces the amount of CO2 that's captured through the stomata and it reduces the um, vegetation growth so the vegetation productivity decreases and a recent study shows that the VPD change rather than changes in precipitation overall substantially influence the vegetation productivity Okay, increasing VPD affects vegetation growth, forest mortality, and yields of crops. Okay, it greatly limits evapotranspiration in many biomes. It alters the, by altering the behavior of plant stomata. Okay, so forests become the, 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 the growth of vegetation on land becomes reduced. Okay, there's a drying out of these um, forest 
of forests on land and vegetation on land, and this makes it much more susceptible to diseases and to uh, being, uh, you know, being undergoing wildfires, you know, which are always a double whammy. I mean, you get rid of the carbon sink from a wildfire, and all that carbon that was stored is actually released up into the atmosphere. Okay, so the, the global changes in, okay, so I'm gonna talk about, I'll, I'll go to the images now. I mean, there's a couple of things called uh, NDVI, a couple of things I'll define that are important for you to keep an eye on. Uh, leaf area index, LAI, okay? Basically, it's the area of the top of all of the leaves divided by the area that the trees are in. I mean, that gives you sort of a ratio, leaf area index. Okay, there's something called normalized difference vegetation index, and it looks it depends on the uh, wavelengths of light reflected from plants, but it allows you to uh, look at plants, uh, plant uh, amounts and health. Uh, tree ring width chronologies. When you have less growth in trees, of course, the 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 the, the, the width of the rings in the tree are less, you know, area, times of very, you know, lots of moisture, lots of rainfall, you know, there'll be lots of growth of the tree, the width of the tree ring will be larger in that particular year. And also uh, the growth primary productivity is being measured. So l let's look at the results, okay? So here we go here. Um, so this is the vapor pressure um, deficit anomaly in kilopascals, unit of pressure, okay? Um, and what you can see here is if you take the average, you know, we have good data, data from all data sets here in this time period, okay? This is the time period that, that's being looked at, 1982 to 2015. So if you take the average of all of these, that sets the zero line. And this is the result, this is the models, okay? The modeling gives you this type of thing. And so far it projects fairly accurately the curve, okay? It, go, it projects what it is. And these are the data sets. So the Climate Research Unit, um, European um, uh, data, and another data set. Um, so the black data here, uh, black circles, yellow circles, green circles. Okay, red circles, the, the data sets. Okay, so the vapor pressure deficit um, over the growing season um, is increasing. Now, because the deficit is increasing, there's not as much moisture in the air relative to the saturation level. So the relative humidity is dropping and the plant growth is, is uh, suffering. That's the idea. Okay, so this is how the VPD is changing now, what supplies uh, the vapor to the atmosphere? It's the evaporation, um, and it's mostly evaporation from the oceans. So this is a this is a time series here, globally averaged ocean evaporation. So this is evaporation in millimeters per year, okay? And it goes from 1960 to roughly the present. And what you can see is. Uh, you know, basically from, you know, 82 in the study, it was growing and to about 98, and now it's actually decreasing. So there's less evaporation in the oceans. Now, if we want to see where that, where the evaporation in the oceans is coming from, that's shown in this map here. So basically, the red is a decrease in the ocean evaporation. The darker red is is uh, less than minus five millimeters per year decrease. Okay, so minus six, minus seven, whatever, is the bright red areas, is, is the biggest decrease in evaporation. And the lighter red areas is a smaller decrease. But the red is all a decrease in regions where there's a decrease in evaporation from the ocean. And the increase, a small increase is the light green in evaporation. The darker green, it's a large increase in evaporation. Okay, so what you can see is a lot more red than green, and thus we're seeing a decline here in the ocean evaporation. Okay, so that's a key thing. Now, if we look at the growth of the plants, the NDVI is a measure of the vegetation growth on the land. 
So from about 84 to 98, it was increasing, okay? And then, in from, and then basically from 98 to 2015, it's been decreasing, okay? Um, and that seems to correlate quite closely with the, um, with the VPD, the vapor pressure deficit. Um, if you want to look at the distribution of how it's been increasing, so this is in 1982 to 98, basically the increase. Um, this was a trend, the, the trend was positive, okay? Growing vegetation, positive slope, but quite narrow. And then from 99 to 2015, the trend flattens out and most of it is below zero. So there's a decline in the um, vegetation. You know, this is how it varies on a seasonal basis. You can also see a, quite a difference in the shape of the curves here. Okay, so let's have a look at, uh, so this is um, basically the, the, the NDVI, which shows the, the plant growth, normalized difference vegetation index, which basically shows the plants between two periods, 82 to 98 and 99, 1999 to 2015. So this is the growth of vegetation. Areas that are green are, are, are areas where there's more growth, more vegetation on the planet. Again, this is uh, 1982 to 1998, and the red areas are where there's a decrease in vegetation growth. And these areas here, these are the deserts, uh, Arctic, Antarctica, where there's no vegetation. Now we look at the period from 1999, basically, uh, to uh, 2015, and we see a huge decrease in vegetation around the planet in the red areas. Like, talk about a shift. You know, before 1998, this guy, you know, growing, and after 1998, the vegetation is being, is growth is decreasing on the planet. So that's the red areas. Um, here, the darker red is more significant decrease of vegetation. The lighter red is a smaller decrease, but it's still a decrease. And then the green areas are the growth areas, with the darker green being the highest growth areas. Now, if you take the different, if you su subtract this curve here from this curve here to look at the difference, uh, you get this guy here, which is, you know, very, which is similar, similar looking to this in most of the, the general features. Okay, um, there's other uh, data, there's leaf area index is another way of, of looking at the amount of vegetation growth. Um, and there's uh, four different studies on leaf area index. Like I said, leaf area index is the area of, the, the, say, the top part of the leaves divided by the total area of the region, the ground. Um, so it's a ratio, you know, fraction of, of an area that is occupied by leaves. and, and uh, you know, what you can see here is you can see um, basically the negative areas, okay, um, the, the uh, negative air areas um, are, ba okay, so this is uh, taken um, during um, 1982 to 2015, the difference between the, the dates of the study. And, uh, you know, it's looking at different correlations between these and the, the, the indexes and the, and the VPD. That's what it's looking at. Okay, so, so there's many different ways to, to look at the data. This is the global primary productivity. Okay, it's in petagrams of carbon per year. Two different uh, data sets, and it shows that it was increasing up to about 19 you know, up to here, roughly, you know, late 90s, and then it started to decrease, which correlates quite well with the VPD. So, in fact, this is the um, sensitivity to the VPD, you know, generally pretty high here. And if you look at the temperature and the, um, this is the uh, PAR photosynthetically active radiation. So not all light helps plant grow, but that's that radiation. And then the NDVI and the CO2 is caused the greening effect, but the overall effect now is, is a lack of greening 
loss of greening on the earth. Thanks for listening.